Hi guys, my name is Calvin, and today I'll be talking about Phaser. So, what is Phaser? Uh, about a couple of weeks ago, one of my teaching fellows here told me about Phaser, and I thought to myself, wow, this is interesting. And how he described it was, it was a game engine that made 2D games, but I couldn't just write that on my slides, so I stole the stuff from Phaser's website. So, According to Phaser, it's a 2D HTML5 game engine that runs on browsers, mobile, and desktop. And it's free and open source, and best of all, it's written in JavaScript. Here, I just stole a screenshot from the website. I steal a lot of things from my presentations. Uh, so basically, it just kind of tells you that the basic features that Phaser offers, such as graphics handling, sound processing, and all that other stuff. So let's talk about why we need game engines or frameworks. So over here in the slides, I put a picture of some technologies that web developers will typically use to make their lives a little bit easier, such as React, SQLite, and so on. So similarly, game developers also want to have their lives made a little easier, so they will use game engines. So game engines will typically help developers handle input, graphics, sounds, and physics. So for example, on the, on the, yeah, the right. On the right, we have a picture of Grand Theft Auto 2. And if, you, if you're playing Grand Theft Auto 2, whoops. If you're playing Grand Theft Auto 2, you'll, get, you'll probably get into a car at some point. You'll drive it around, you'll crash it, you'll blow up, and you'll die. So game engines will help the developer focus on the mechanics of the game rather than having to focus on every minute detail, such as what graphics should I play now, or what sound should I play now, or in the case of a car, the physics, when you hit somebody, or when you hit something, and when you blow up. So as I mentioned earlier, Phaser is a two-dimensional game engine, so we can't do 3D. And so we can make games like Super Mario, Pac-Man, and any of the classic arcade games that you can think of, or Tetris or something. So right now, I'm going to do a quick demo of a couple of games that I've made with the help of a Udemy tutorial. So let's see. Let me drag this stuff over. Where does this go? Oh. OK. And also, let me drag some of the code over, too. I hate it when the screen is, screen is on my right, but then I have to scroll to the left to bring windows over. All right, so this here on the left, this game here, is a children's animal farm game, which teaches children uh, about farm animals, what they're called. As you can see here, if I hit the arrows, it scrolls through various <coughs> farm animals. If I click on an animal, such as this chicken here. Chicken. <coughs> it'll make a, a little noise that'll entertain like a three-year-old or something. So yeah, they all just go like, I don't know, pig goes moo or sheep goes ba, <laughs> and so on. <laughs> Yeah, don't trust me to teach your children. <laughs> um, so on the right here, we have some of the code. Let me make this a little bigger. And I'm going to go at a very high level about the general structure that Phaser has. So, you'll, so in Phaser, you typically have like a preload function, a create function, and an update function. There it is. The preload function is basically where you tell Phaser to load all the stuff like pictures, audio, and animations, and whatever else you need, such as this arrow here, or this sheep here, or this background of clouds and green grass. And then afterwards, af the create function will actually create the game, and it'll handle most of the logic. You just have to tell it where to put everything. So for example, um, I put the sheep in the middle. 
and I put the shik in the middle, I could have put it to the top left or something, but the middle made more sense. It also handles a lot of the click handling. You just have to tell it where, what you're clicking on, and it'll do some kind of callback function for you to do. And finally, the update function. Uh, well, I don't use it here, but you would use it if you wanted to kind of loop. So for example, if I wanted to make this sheep spin in circles forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, I would use this update function, and I would tell it to spin forever and ever and ever and ever. And I have one more game that I just want to show. One, give me one sec while I run the server. And let me get rid of this code here. And then make this bigger. All right, here I have a Mario versus Donkey Kong clone. And this whole thing is also built in Phaser, of course. Uh, it handles all the standard inputs from my keyboard. I can make my character jump. I can hit my head on the ceiling or land on the platforms and not fly through it. If I touch the fire or if I get hit by that barrel up there, um, I die and the game restarts. And as I mentioned earlier, Phaser also supports mobile. And on mobile, you wouldn't have a keyboard. So if you notice at the bottom here, there are little boxes. I did not make their are buttons, basically, but I didn't make it look very good. So this one makes you go right. This one makes you go left. You click on this. I jump. And yeah, that's basically my game and some of the things that you can do with Phaser. And I have to give credit where it's due. Oh, I hate dragging this in. So this is Phaser's website, phaser.io. And I also and these two games that you just saw, I created with. I had the help of Pablo Navarro's Udemy course. He helped me kind of create this. I was very lost in the beginning. Um, any questions? <laughs>